On this episode of Feasting, I'm fortunate enough to eat at three of the best restaurants in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I interview one of the best chefs in the city, Adam Pollock, and learn about pasta from his brother, Alex. I help make some cheese curds at the Lakefront Brewery and devour the number one chicken sandwich in Milwaukee at the Crafty Cow. I know you want some. <laughs> We'll start our day off at Egg and Flour, a pasta bar in Bayview where the pasta is handcrafted and the ingredients are locally sourced. We're in the heart of Bayview. We've been here for four years. We just had our four year anniversary uh, last wow. week. So this is the first brick and mortar and only brick and mortar of the restaurant. So we get to decide, you know, when we're open, the schedule, mm -hmm. um, when we want to do private events, if we need to close for holidays, all of our staff, everything's done here. We have a bar here, we do beer, we have our own wine label. Um, we do uh, hard liquor as well, but this is a way I saw for that. us. Yeah, exactly. So it's a I little like bit that. different than what we've done in the past, but the thing that's cool about this place too is that we have a full kitchen to be able to do really great specials. The whole thing about egg and flour and how it started is that every single day we would have a new special that would come onto the menu for the day. And when it sold out, it sold out. So mm -hmm. it's really cool for me to be able to have a place that's bigger and uh, more equipment mm -hmm. and make it a lot easier for myself and my staff to come up with different specials and do new stuff. We might add pizza to the menu. We used to do pizza. We really? had a restaurant called ENF Pizzeria. Uh, it was like kind of like a one-off of what our brand is now. Mm -hmm. So we want to bring pizza back and we want to do uh, special events like cooking classes here, which we do a lot of cooking classes, teaching people how to make pasta. Wow. We do a lot of, uh, you know, events here in the space, whether it's multi-cooking, uh, we do pop-ups with other restaurants and stuff. So it's cool to have a space like this that we can have control of and, uh, and showcase what we do here. How was it on Hell's Kitchen? Just yeah. being around Gordon Ramsay, that's just the coolest thing ever. Yeah, so Hell's Kitchen was definitely an experience I couldn't say no to. You know, I've watched all those seasons, all those episodes, Same. all the way through, you know, for more so entertainment. You yep. know, I don't think people are watching uh, <laughs> Hell's Kitchen for um, learning how to cook or anything, but it's good entertainment. And when you get the call, you know, I've been trying to, I tried to get on that show a few times, but when I got the call to say, hey, you're gonna be a contestant, we want you to be on here. Wow. You know, your whole mindset changes and it's more so about being around Gordon Ramsay, being around all these other great chefs, being able to showcase what you've learned over the years and be mm -hmm. able to cook um, the food that you know and be in that competition setting. You know, that was mm -hmm. the first TV competition that I was ever in. So there was no practice on like uh, a, a one-off show or a, a one episode show or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It was going from I've never done this TV thing before, cooked in front of a camera or whatever, um, to jumping into a multi-season or a multi-episode full season show. Um, and it's Gordon Ramsay, so it's a little <laughs> bit stressful and you can't really plan for it. A little bit. It. But once you get there, you know, you want to do your best and you want to prove not, I mean, the cameras are irrelevant at that point. You're mm -hmm. cooking for Gordon Ramsay, you're cooking wow. for the other guest judges. And it, honestly, it makes you better and it makes you like more aware and, um, just inspired when you're cooking to say, hey, if, if he's around, um, I want it to be the best that I can do. And it's, you know, it's a, it was a fun experience. It was stressful, it was crazy, it was, you know, tiring, but definitely happy that I got that opportunity. And I think a lot of people uh, enjoyed watching. We represented the city really well and, and Milwaukee, and we all know that line is learned everything from Milwaukee. And yep. uh, I'll never forget that, you know. That's I can so always cool. watch it whenever I want, so it's fun.
Yeah, it's soaking up all of this flavor. Yeah, there's so much meat on this. That's crazy. It's way easier to eat, you know, than just like spaghetti where you have all those little strands of noodles and you're just struggling to even get it all on your fork. Yeah, you really I, don't have that with this. I feel like people, like the way that we do it here at Egg and Flour is um, the, we place the sauces with the noodles so that it's going to pick it up the most. So some mm. of like the more loose noodles are going to have a, a thicker sauce so it coats it. And some of the noodles, like uh, your, your next dish here, uh, gives it a chance to get in all the crevices and have like little flavor, little flavor explosions. Thank you, yeah, this is, this is making my life so much easier than just eating spaghetti <laughs> at Olive Garden. That just takes forever just to put it on your fork. This is so good, so much meat on this. This is delicious. Yeah, there's so many different shapes of noodles. There's, there's hundreds and there's you know, maybe thousands, who knows, uh, <laughs> but so here at the restaurant, we have mm. a rotating six okay. and uh, we try to do different stuff with our specials and do things that people haven't seen or haven't bought in the grocery store other than your classic mm -hmm. spaghetti or fettuccine, uh, nice. penne, uh, macaroni. Um, so we try to do some different stuff too. So savory. Yeah, I was looking at this wall. I was just like, I've never even heard of half of the different types of pasta. I didn't even know that all of that stuff existed. <laughs> That's so cool. I wonder why, like they have so many different types. Is that because it goes better with the food, kind of making it easier? Or why is there so many different types of pasta? Yeah, kind of, I think it's just based on the sauces, based on the regions, based on who's making it. Mm. Um, you know, if you travel around Italy and Sicily, there's every region has a different thing. Um, some will use a, a heavy a meat sauce. Some mm -hmm. are using a lighter olive oil sauce. So it kind of depends on the noodle shape or how they're making it. I love this because again in like the sauce usually you have a red sauce and then you have little bits of meat in it. This is just the meat. Yeah it's so we do it is a tomato based sauce so we will have that we, we started with that tomato sauce because it's braised down with the meat and um, our vegetables. Um, it's it's kind of all together it's not putting the ground meat into the tomato sauce like you're saying. Um, we cook it for eight hours um, and it just brings all the all the stuff together. Um, but this is green, so it's our it's heavy basil, and we we put it with our campanelli noodle or campanelle. I was going to ask about that. I've never seen one like and this. It's like, so a, it's little like a little flower. flower. Yeah. yeah, this is beautiful. And kind of early when we're talking about the pasta shape, this kind of gives it a, a, the pesto little places for the to get into the noodle and to eat it with, um, and and it's a fun shape. So. Very easy to eat, even easier than this. I just love, I just love how convenient it is to eat up this delicious food. Because usually, again, you have just like the angel hair pasta, which is just, it's a struggle. It tastes so good, but then it falls off of your fork, and then you have to keep on going back. But yeah, this is like, yeah, it definitely has this oil taste that just makes it kind of, kind of like butter, but obviously yeah. healthier. Yeah, your pestos are are probably the the lighter bunch of the group for here at egg and flour or wherever you're eating pesto uh, that's kind of one of the lighter options so such a unique taste my goodness especially when you get into the middle and you have all of the uh, sauce what is this is, is that the sauce yeah so that's going to be that's the sauce kind of mm -hmm. mixed in we also throw in like uh, fresh basil fresh par uh, parsley mm -hmm. chives um, and then like everything here uh, cheese uh, more Lots parmesan cheese. cheese on top so can't have too much cheese and lastly, uh, this is a salad? Yeah, so this is, a, this wow. is a, our caprese salad. Uh, most people uh, hear about a caprese salad and they have the sliced tomatoes, um, mm -hmm. your sliced mozzarella cheese, mm -hmm. fresh basil, and uh, like a balsamic glaze or balsamic dressing. Um, we like that idea, but we wanted to kind of do it a little bit differently. So we have our sliced tomatoes, um, but we toss them in our pesto sauce, add a little uh, fresh basil, um, salt and pepper, and then underneath we're going to use our balsamic uh, dressing to get that balsamic flavor, and then topping it, instead of using like the sliced mozzarella, we put our stracciatella cheese, which Atella? is uh, stracciatella. Stracciatella. Yeah, so that's going to be the inside of the burrata, um, and it's just like a nice fluffy, kind of uh, almost like a cottage cheese or a ricotta. 
Uh, it's we'll so put that it's on like top. refreshing. Yeah, and then we're we're fans of pistachios, so we got some crunch on there, and we throw some uh, fresh ground pistachios and uh, more Parmesan cheese. So that's our uh, take on a classic uh, wow. caprese salad. So unique. Again, you know, when you say salad, I think of just iceberg lettuce with some ranch dressing, except this is just like a cake, kind of. Yeah, most people come in and they'll, they'll order that and they'll, they'll ask for the lettuce. And I mean, it's under our salad menu, but the, the caprese mm -hmm. salad is the, yeah, like the tomato, the basil, uh, and the mozzarella, so. Um, no lettuce there. So if you're looking for a salad here, we wow. do offer a couple different salads. We have a mixed green salad, we have a Caesar salad, but this is more of like an appetizer, entree salad. Um, Something different. It's crazy how you just made a tomato taste so special and so unique by putting on all of these things, including nuts. I would have never guessed to just put that combination together, but it just fits so well. And the cheese, it's just, it's so refreshing. It's, it really makes you just want to finish this as, as fast as possible. <laughs> this is so cool. I've never had a dish like this before. This is, this is something truly special. Awesome, appreciate Thank you. it, man. Of course. My brother came up with the concept of egg and flour uh, about five years ago. Uh, this wasn't our original location. We started in a food hall, mm -hmm. um, and it was just about five items on that menu, uh, and all these items were on that original menu. Uh, after about a year there, we, we found this spot in Bayview, and uh, we really expanded the menu. So now I think we're up to about 15, 16 different kinds of pastas, different salads, we have sandwiches. Um, and it's really cool. This area is really cool, up and growing. Mm -hmm. uh, me and my brother grew up probably about eight blocks away from here. Um, so it's, it's really awesome to just be in the neighborhood that we're from, uh, serve the people that have been here since day one, new people. The area has been new and growing, so that's really cool. And it's, it's cool working with my brother. We both get to... Uh, do what we love to do and help each other out and grow and you know be in this uh, crazy business of food and and uh, serving people so i uh, really dig it and uh, come and check us out if you haven't a couple blocks away on kinnikinick is crafty cow the next restaurant we'll be visiting it's the home of the award-winning fancy chicken sandwich and i cannot wait to taste it. Yeah, yeah it melts. It's yeah. like got the crispy outside from the uh, breading. And then- That's what it is. Yep. And then the fat kind of heats up in the fryer and then it just kind of melts in your mouth. It's, it's really, really great. Yeah, it definitely melts. Yeah, that is not annoying at all to eat. And it doesn't feel unhealthy, you know, like <laughs> like on a steak when you have like yep. the chewy part, yep. which is the fat, and you're like, all right, is this good for me? I don't know if it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Yeah. That is just so flavorful. Thank you. That is incredible. Wow. Uh, should we move on to this one? Yes. Yes, please. All right. Uh, it's a smash style burger that was invented in Oklahoma during the Great Depression. Mm. So the beef was super expensive. Uh, and they wanted to figure out a way that they could still make a burger, um, but at a good price for everybody. So they took onions and they smashed them into the patties. And it actually turned out super great where like people were freaking out and loved it so much that it's still around today. Wow. Um, the onions cook in the beef fat once you smash the patty down, and then when you flip the patty over, you get a nice crust on the burger, plus uh, those onions get a nice little char on them. Mm -hmm. And it's actually, there's a lot of onions in the burger, um, but they kind of just melt into the meat, which is just adding more texture, more flavor, um, a little more crunch. And then we just put pickles, American cheese, and then like our house burger sauce, which we call special sauce. That's a big burger. Yeah, it's a big burger. This Man. is two four ounce patties. Thank you so much. Cheers. Let's go. Mm. So what exactly got you into like the uh, you know food industry? Like what made you wanna start owning your own restaurants and 
going out to LA and finding mm -hmm. places and then mm -hmm. incorporating it into your own menu? Um, well, I've always liked food. Um, I've always been really into food. And I feel like that's the cliche answer. And that isn't really all it is for me. Mm -hmm. A lot of it for me is like when I was younger, and I still do this, like, uh, and my wife is, does this too, as actually one of the reasons I feel like we're together, Aww. is that we love throwing parties for people and like bringing people together and mm -hmm. like celebrating, uh, whether it's like a real celebration of like a birthday or just being with friends. Um, so I think that's mostly my driving passion in the industry is like just getting a, getting and being a spot for people to come together. Just having like, you know, some excuse to yeah. see somebody. Yep, excuse to see somebody, excuse to bring people in, even people I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. it, and honestly, like through our goals for the next year are to like double down on that part of the experience. We do really well with our food um, mm -hmm. and now we're trying to get into how can we make the service aspect of it just as special and different and unique. Um, yeah. It was beautiful. Yeah. This is just like a combination of everything that I love. I love mushrooms, love eggs, love spicy food, love ramen, and I love fried chicken. Same. Um, so like I... You were just like, yeah. one day, might as well try it out. Yeah, Let's we just did. put it all in the bowl. <laughs> yep. Let's see how it is. Yeah, this smells just this is, unbelievable. Yeah. This is, uh, I would say, one of the most unique dishes that we have. You get a little bit of like savoriness from the mushrooms. Mm -hmm. uh, the egg's pretty rich. The breading surprisingly stays crispy, even though you're putting it like in. Mm. It might not be now that I dumped broth all over it, <laughs> but because it's on the top, it stays crispy. That'll be good. Yeah. Oh yeah, she's spicy. Yeah, it's not just like a hot sauce, but it definitely tastes so unique. So many different ingredients just coming together. Yeah, it's so satisfying. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had anything like this. There's a snap pea and broccoli slaw on there that is really creamy and it kind of cu helps cut that heat down. There's a chipotle aioli, which I know sounds crazy because it's like heat and heat. Let's go. Um, but it's got a really good flavor to it. Uh, there's some dill pickles on there, which help cut the heat out a little bit. And then this uh, cornbread bun. I was going to ask about that. that yeah, so, so it's got good. a corn dusting on it. A it's a little dust. bit sweeter, too, uh, because it's a cor like cornbread bread based bun. It's not as soft as like traditional cornbread. Mm -hmm. It is heartier, it doesn't fall apart. Um, but it really adds to the chicken sandwich. It says right on here, you are eating the number one chicken sandwich in Milwaukee. That's so impressive. <laughs> so cool. Hey, if you ain't first, you're last. Oh, yeah. And who, who said that again? Was that was oh. that Abraham Lincoln? Who, who was that? I don't know who said that. <laughs> Or if you are, if you're second, you're the first person to lose, right? I like that. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I didn't even see like that broccoli. Yes, yeah, so wow, there's broccoli. That's there's a little bit of snap peas in there, kale. Oh, um, kale. Let's go. That's healthy. And uh, I think watermelon radish too. And the uh, chicken breast was this uh, was this breaded once or twice? Uh, so we we brine it in pickle juice. Uh, it's kind of help break it down and make it really tender and juicy. And then we bread it once, dip it in buttermilk, then we bread it again. Oh my God. And then fry it. Oh, let's go. Number one, yeah. chicken sandwich. Yeah. There's the spice in this one, but mm -hmm. because that slaw is on mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. you kind of just get the flavor of the pepper. Mm -hmm. uh, you get a little sweetness from the bun. Pickle's really tangy. You, you kind of hit every yes. single spot on your tongue with this one. And I mean, kind of, we were talking about this before, like awards and tastes are so subjective. And um, we know not everybody's gonna think that, but we're proud for the people that do. Mm -hmm. So that's why we wanted to put it out there a little bit more. That's so nice. Um, especially if you are like a chicken sandwich connoisseur, it's mm -hmm. like, even if uh, you still go and say Popeyes is better, like <laughs> at least you come in here and you get to try it.
and try something that a lot of people say is, is the best. For my last stop, I ventured to a Milwaukee staple, the Lakefront Brewery, where its cheese curds stand out amongst all the others in the state. Executive chef Christian Henneke shows me how to make the famous curds. Start going to make curd batter. And here are the cheese curds. These are going to go into the dredge, which is a mix of flour and a bunch of different seasoning, which mm. we have coined LFB or Lakefront Brewery seasoning. Wow. And these are just going to get tossed in here. And is this the uh, top selling item here? Uh, yeah, that and our fish fry, mm -hmm. and also soft pretzels. So very Milwaukee, um, a lot of German mm -hmm. roots there, very Wisconsin all together. We also have a bunch of sausages and things like that, but mm. by far these cheese curds are the best seller. I've only worked at places where there's just no love in the back of the kitchen, like Culver's, Chick-fil-A. This yeah, is so I, cool. I like it so much. I don't want to call anyone out on that, but it's one of those... Uh, the idea is always, if you're gonna do it, do the best. Mm -hmm. Don't just have like, oh, it's a little bit, it's a little bit like so and so, or it's kind of this. Like, if we can't have the best of it, then we're not gonna try and compete with the ones who do do it best. So this is definitely one of the ones that we hit the mark there. That's perfect. So in the fryer they go. Give that a little shake. Down they go. What we're going to be looking for, and you'll see it in just a second, are a nice golden brown crispy texture mm. and then some of that cheese starting to peek out a little bit from the shell. We're about halfway there, mm. a little more, and see those kind of orangey pieces? Yes. That's the cheese starting to peek oh, through. Wow. So that's what we're looking for. We're right on track. I used to work at a place with cheese curds and I remember kind of forgetting about them sometimes. And then I would pull up the basket and it'd just it's be just black. A shell. <laughs> just yeah. black. It's like, oh, gotta make another one. Well, then I guess I'll finish this part so we don't have that happen. These are humongous, oh my goodness. Yeah, and that's what I was telling you about cheese pull. So yeah, and then you gotta pull it out. Wow. But it's kind of the, you get a nice. Yeah, the crunch is so spectacular. It's, mm -hmm. and don't. It's nothing like a McDonald's nugget mm -mm. at all. No, no. <laughs> no, wow. Yeah, inside it's completely gooey mm -hmm. and delicious. Cheese, and then, wow. When cheese curds are fresh, the proteins and the cheese squeak on your teeth, on the enamel. But then once they're cooked, that goes away and that's when you get like that ooey-gooeyness to it. So that's, you know, multifaceted curds. I could eat a hundred of these. I've heard from so many people that Lakefront Brewery has the best cheese curds and I can definitely see why these it's such a unique and special taste. And yeah, you can for sure tell that these ingredients are fresh. Yeah, that's kind of, I think, what sets them above all the other ones. They're, they're not frozen. They're um, handled with a lot of care. We're getting them in every week and uh, really plowing through them, too. We're breading it by hand. We're frying them right there in the kitchen when wow. you order them. Nothing's sitting around. Okay. Um, and 
man, are we making a lot of that ranch a week. It's in these giant tubs that were just, it's Do like, you sell the tubs? Because I know somebody who would love to buy one of them. I, no, but you can buy ranch. You can <laughs> buy the individual ones. You can? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I bet we should make bigger containers of ranch to sell. Absolutely. We just haven't gotten that far yet. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much. No problem. Brilliant. I'm glad you enjoyed them and got to help me make a batch of cheese curds. And uh, we'll bring cheese curds to the world just yet. Wow, what a day. Egg and flour, that place and the food was just perfect. Crafty cow, that was one of the best chicken sandwiches that I've ever had in my entire life. Lakefront Brewery, this place is legendary. Before I do anything else, I gotta finish the rest of these cheese curds and then head over to Planet Fitness and run on the treadmill just for a couple hundred hours. I'll see you guys in the next one.